I just watched a video of a wedding photographer explaining how these SD card holders corrupted all of her wedding photos. So let's talk about how to safely store all the photos that you shoot. Now, to be clear, it wasn't exactly this case. These cases that I'm using are actually rubber lined. They come with different inserts so you can swap them out. Like right now I've got CF Express B, I've got SD cards and micro SD cards, and I've got a few of them depending on what I've shot. Like these ones I think have some data on them still that I haven't erased. These guys should be fresh, but you, you might realize I don't actually have a lot of memory cards. I've got two of these cases, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe a dozen, two dozen memory cards at most. But the one that she was talking about in her video was actually one of these really big ones that holds like 50 SD cards and it's foam lined and it has a cover. And the problem that she had was that when you put the SD cards in and out of the foam, because of the material that the foam is made of, it would cause a static, discharge to build up and then it would zap the memory cards and she would lose all of her data. Now this actually happened to me many years ago when I was still just a single memory card shooter and at the time I was using I was using Lexar memory cards in fact I think this was one of the ones that I was using that that got corrupted which is one of the reasons why I don't really use at Lexar memory cards anymore. Nothing particularly bad about them, but I just, it gives me anxiety thinking about me losing my data. But another thing she said in the video was that she won't erase the data on her SD cards until she's fully edited and delivered a project. Now I know there are photographers out there who do this, who literally have 30, 40, 50 memory cards, will double shoot, meaning, you know, if you have a camera that has two SD card slots, you're using that as your form of backup, but but the problem is that SD cards aren't really a long-term storage solution. So I'm gonna grab a, a pen and paper here. So we've got pen and paper and a ton of hard drives, and, and I'm gonna illustrate what my data storage solution is and what I think the best option for you is if you're looking to offload your cards, but have a backup and then have an extra backup because we all need redundancies in case things fail. Step one, when I bring my camera home, I will take the SD card, one of the SD cards out of my camera and load that onto either a solid state drive that is attached externally, or in my case, I have an internal solid state drive that is a four gigabyte drive. You can kind of think of it as my everyday working drive. But the other SD card stays into my camera until that process, until all of those photos are transferred. Step two for me is an automatic process. So as much as possible, I don't wanna be copying and pasting things manually. I want processes to run in the background. So what I have is I have a very large regular hard drive, so a spinning disk drive that I have Veeam, which is like a backup software utility that will run daily backups of that solid state drive. So the, the hard drive itself is 16, terabytes, whereas the solid state drive is four terabytes. And what that allows me to do is have backup, like versioned backups of my solid state drive. So one problem you can encounter is, is data corruption. So you need backups that you can go back and, and grab things. But also if you accidentally delete something and you don't realize you delete something, the versioned backups that are on that daily backup hard drive means I can go back for a week or two weeks or however long and recover things in case I accidentally delete something that I didn't mean to delete. Step three, this is where it gets complicated. Might need a separate color for this, hold on. Step three is where it gets interesting. It's also automated, but I have cloud backup of both of these drives. I know I, I used red for a cloud, it, it doesn't make sense, but I actually use a service that's called Backblaze and I, and I think it's one flat fee. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's like 10 or $15 a month. Editor Anthony here. It is $9 a month and I actually found out I have a referral link. So not, not affiliated in any way, but if you use it, you'll get the first month for free. So I'll put that down in the description for you to check out.
it's basically like having another subscription service, but what it allows you to do is automatically back up any hard drives that are directly attached to your computer. So we would call that direct attached storage as opposed to NAS, which is network attached storage, which we'll get there. We'll get there in just a second. Actually, hold on. My uh, my doorbell just rang. Let me uh, let me grab it. I uh, I actually don't know what's in this package, but uh, we're about to find out. I uh, oh okay, we got uh, this is exciting. It's photography related. Nope. <laughs> we got some uh, K and K and F. ND filters, because there's a, a solar eclipse coming up in the... Uh, solar eclipse? Lunar eclipse? There's a, a solar eclipse and we're gonna maybe capture some of it. M maybe, we'll see. ND 10, mi 10 million? What is that, ND 100,000? So like basically the darkest ND filter you've ever seen in your life. Oh my gosh, it is so dark. Okay, for reference, I am, I'm pointing it at my light and no light is coming through. ND 100,000, that is insane. Play with these later. Okay, where were we? So at this point, we have one solid state drive that we're editing off of that is a, you know, a fast solid state drive so that Lightroom runs fast. That is being backed up to a physical hard drive, which is slower, bigger, less expensive on a per terabyte or per gigabyte basis. And then both of these are being backed up to an offline backup solution. So that's a one, two, three backup. If that's all you had, you would be perfect. But because I have a lot of data, I have a lot of video files, I have a lot of photo files, sometimes these run out. So sometimes I have multiple SSDs kind of at this point one position. And that is where all of these come in. So these are various brands. I have some of these Western digital ones, which people tend to not like, but the Samsung ones, the T7 drives in the ruggedized form and the more, the thinner aluminum form, these are what I put working projects on. So if I have a big video project that's maybe bigger than four gigabytes, or maybe I don't want it filling up my main drive, these I will use just for a project. So a wedding, a big YouTube thing, maybe I have multiple photos that I, I wanna organize, but this is not long-term storage. These I will still back up to something else, which if I need more storage, I will back up to my network storage. And this is where everyone loses their mind because this is where it, it all becomes pretty complicated. Where's my marker? So how do I how do I say this? This is like step three. So that the cloud, cloud is step three. Okay, I think, I think this makes sense, but this is effectively where my NAS lives. So when this gets full, the overflow makes it into here. But the problem that I mentioned is that Backblaze only backs up localized storage, unless, changing colors to a different marker, unless you get Backblaze B2, which is like their, their business, their enterprise solution that unfortunately does charge you a per gigabyte fee. So in my case, because I have a lot of video files that wouldn't fit on a single hard drive, I have the NAS, which is set up in RAID. So there's redundancy there in terms of a hard drive failure, but then this is backed up to Backblaze. So in this case, I have two copies. I don't have three copies. Anything that goes onto my NAS is stuff that I probably don't need anymore. So archived projects, photos that are older than three years, old university projects, all that is gonna be on my NAS. So my recommendation, if you're looking for a simple, stupid solution, is to just implement the top half of this, where either you have a solid state drive for all your working stuff, and then another solid state drive. So if you wanted to, you could have like a like an offline disconnected copy of the same thing, but then have a virtual offsite third copy in the cloud. Honestly, Backblaze, not sponsored, not affiliated with them in any way. One of my old coworkers told me about it. He was using it for all his like, his photos and his videos. And honestly, it is it is a solution that if you don't want to buy hundreds and hundreds of, of SD cards and have one of these massive, like SD cards are expensive. Most people don't realize that on a per gigabyte basis, which is the number you should be comparing your storage solutions by, is that SD cards, especially the super fast ones or the CF Express cards, like the one I showed you earlier, like this ProGrade one, which is absolutely awesome, super fast, 
But also this is like a $1,000, $1,200 memory card and you don't wanna be using these as long-term storage. You're gonna be much better off, you know, for the same capacity, actually for more capacity, buying one of these Samsung drives and being able to store multiple projects on it and probably have this one be faster. Well, maybe not faster, not faster than the CF Express card, but probably a little bit more reliable since it's got that waterproofing, ruggedized look. You can take this, throw this on your shelf and not worry about it. But I'll link to all that stuff, to the memory cards, to the drives that I use, to the NAS stuff that I recommend down in the description. If you found any of this helpful and you'd like me to go further into memory cards and hard drives and all that sort of stuff for storing your photos and your video files, let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And until the next one, go shoot photos.